Now, I'm not lying when I say I have never, ever recommended to anyone that they should live in St. Mary's, Idaho. Yes, it is far enough away from Coeur d'Alene that you don't have the big crowds and tons of tourists. And yes, it is an outdoor paradise like most of North Idaho. Tons of snowmobiling, hiking, fishing, hunting, dirt biking, all the fun stuff. They've got decent food and yeah, it's a beautiful town. But there's one thing about St. Mary's I just, I can't get over and I can't in good conscience recommend that people come live here. Now, I wanna keep an open mind. It's been a long time since I've been here. And so we're gonna check it out. I'm gonna share all the information I have about this place. At the end, I'm gonna tell you what that one thing is. And I think you'll probably agree with me, but make sure you watch the whole video so you have all the information. You can decide if this is the right place for you or if you should avoid it. So welcome to another episode of Living Life in North Idaho. My name is Trent and on this channel we talk about what it's like living, eating, working, playing and buying real estate here in Idaho. If that's of interest to you, make sure you tap the subscribe button, hit the notification bell so every time I come out with a new video, you're getting notified. So like I said, I don't wanna be unfair to this area and only tell you about the negative sides. I'm gonna go over everything about St. Mary's so you can decide if this really is a place that you want to live. I'm gonna show you the entire town. I'm gonna to show you how I got here, how far away it is from Coeur d'Alene. We're gonna look at the medical services, we're gonna talk about the cost of income, the cost of living, the crime rate. And we're also gonna look at the average house here in St. Mary's. And then we're gonna look at one of the nicest houses in St. Mary's. Not to try to sell you on anything, just so you know what kind of housing is in this area and the type of people that are living here. Once you know all that, I'll tell you exactly why I tell people they should avoid living in St. Mary's. If you stick with me, you should know everything about St. Mary's and decide if this is a place that you should live or you should avoid. Now, there's two ways to get to St. Mary's from Coeur d'Alene. You can either jump on Highway 95 South, head all the way down to Highway 5, and then cut over and you'll end up in St. Mary's. Now, today I decided I'm going to head east towards Montana on Interstate I-90 so I can take you over the 4th of July Pass to show you what that looks like. And then I'm going to get off at the Rose Lake exit and travel all the way down along the Coeur d'Alene River because personally, I like that drive a lot better. I think it's way more beautiful, but it is a little more dangerous in the winter because you have to go over the pass. Now, I will warn you, right outside of town, just a few minutes off of the exit, you're gonna come across an elk farm. Now, I don't know about you, but every time I see elk, I just have to stop and watch them for a second because you don't see them all the time up here and they really are a beautiful animal. So here's some footage from that. And real quick side note, I had a French film crew with me the day I made this video. I know that sounds kind of funny. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, they got a hold of me because they're making a documentary and they asked if they could film me making one of my videos. I said, sure. If you want more information on this, I'll, I'll comment in the comment section if I see somebody asking about it. But just wanted to warn you because you might see them in some of the footage. All right. So as I'm driving, showing you how I get to St. Mary's and the beautiful footage, I'm gonna tell you about the things that I like about St. Mary's because I'm guessing you guys are gonna like these too. So the population of St. Mary's is just 2,500 people. To put that in perspective, Kootenai County, that's where Coeur d'Alene, Hayden, Dalton Gardens and the surrounding towns are, that has 150,000 people. So it really is a small, small town. The cost of living is just 87 out of 100. Now, what does that mean? It means that if the average cost of living in America is 100, it is 13% cheaper to live in St. Mary's. But that's not really the whole story. Yes, it is cheaper, but you also can't get paid very much at all, which we'll get into here in a second. Growth. Is there a lot of growth happening in St. Mary's? No, not really. In fact, there's only been 27 single family dwelling permits pulled since 2000. Yeah, that's right. In 24 years, only 27 permits have been pulled. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the only single family dwellings that were built. Uh, not everybody who lives in St. Mary's 
cares about making sure the government gets paid. That obviously is tightening up now that it's growing a little bit, but yeah, there is not a lot of growth down there. The medical situation for medical facilities, you do have Vinawak Community Hospital, which is a critical access hospital. You also have Valley Vista Care Center of St. Mary's, which is a nursing home. So ultimately, you're not gonna die if you have an emergency, but if you need a surgery, if you need a specialist, you're definitely gonna be either going over to Spokane or coming up to Coeur d'Alene, which is about an hour away. You do have schools right in St. Mary's. You have the St. Mary's High School, which has about 374 people that go to it. You also have the St. Mary's Community Education Center, which is an alternative school. And you have the St. Mary's Middle School, which has about 221 students in it. You also have Hayburn Elementary School, but that wasn't even showing up when I was trying to find out how many kids go there. So I'm guessing it's fairly small. The average home in St. Mary's costs just $320,000, which honestly is kind of astronomical considering that most of my life you could get a house in St. Mary's for around fifty dollars to $100,000. So $320,000 might seem like a really good deal right now, but for us who've lived here for many, many years, that is pretty crazy. I will show you what the average house in St. Mary's looks like and compare it to the most expensive house in St. Mary's, which costs around $3 million. St. Mary's is right off the southern tip of Lake Coeur d'Alene, which is about 25 miles long. You also have the 140 mile long St. Joe River, which has some of the best fishing in the area. And you also have the 49 mile long St. Mary's River, also really great fishing. So when you just look at the positives, I can see why some people want to live there. Shoot, if I had a bad enough brain injury and forgot about the negatives of this town, I might even want to live there. We'll go over the negatives in a second. Now that we are in St. Mary's, I'm gonna show you around town so that you get a good idea visually of what they're working with down there. There are a few things that bring people to St. Mary's. You have a four-day lively annual festival held every Labor Day weekend, celebrating the town's logging heritage with parades, logging competitions, carnival rides, and fireworks. You also have the motocross races that take place every year. And we got really lucky. There was one happening the day that we were filming over on Christmas Hills. It's a 24-hour hard enduro race that people bring out their trailers, they camp for the weekend, and they party like there's no tomorrow. I think next year I might actually have to go to this one. I personally have never been, but I hear that the fair in St. Mary's looks like something out of a 60s movie. It's bright, it's beautiful, it's fun, it's safe, and it's family oriented. There is the trail of the Coeur d'Alene's, which is a 73 mile paved trail that runs along the former Union Pacific Railroad. That brings a lot of people out there to hike and bike it. There's also the St. Mary's Golf Course and the St. Joe National Forest, which has over 800,000 acres that's open to the public for recreational fun. But like I said before, St. Mary's has some negatives that should not be overlooked. Now, these are more of the basic negatives. I'm gonna save the really bad negative for the end, but these are the things that usually get people to not even wanna look in St. Mary's. The average household income, not individual, but household income in St. Mary's is just $49,000 a year. Compare that to 72,000, which is Idaho's average, it's easy to understand why 20% of the population is living in poverty. This isn't a small detail. Poverty has been proven to lead to higher crimes, drug use, alcohol abuse, poor health, and mental health issues. All are true down in St. Mary's. Speaking of crime rates, the crime rate is 25.3 out of a 22.7 national average. This can be attributed to people having less opportunity, limited entertainment, and limited law enforcement resources to cover such a big area. Not that St. Mary's is big, it's just a large area in and around St. Mary's. St. Mary's is still a timber and mining town, which is why it was created in the first place. But lately, it is starting to bring in more tourists, which is why I wanted to revisit this area.
I found this next bit of information while doing some research that really helps contrast St. Mary's to the rest of the state. And I think you guys will get a much better view of this place based on this information. The median home value in St. Mary's is below state average. Diversity is significantly below state average. Foreign born population percentage is significantly below state average. The house age is above state average. Institutionalized population percentage above state average. Number of college students significantly below state average. There's one more piece of information I need to share with you about St. Mary's, and it's the reason I don't recommend this place. But before I get to that, I want to show you the spectrum of people that live here. And the best way to do that is to show you their homes. We're going to look at the outside of one house that is right at the average cost, and then we're looking at the most expensive home on the market in St. Mary's, which is $3 million. So this home at 611 Washington Avenue is a three bedroom, one and a half bath with 1600 square feet. It's on a third of an acre. And as you can see, it needs a full remodel. It's a 1980s kitchen, shag carpet, brass fixtures, $329,000. As you can see, this house really hasn't been updated and it needs it pretty bad. A lot of homes in St. Mary's are like this. The economy doesn't really support individuals enough to be splurging on home renovations. That and people aren't really concerned about impressing their guests, this, but that brings me to the highest priced home in St. Mary's. Well, about seven minutes outside of downtown St. Mary's. The owners were nice enough to let us come film inside and they even answered a few questions for me to better help people understand their motivation for moving there and why they're selling. So how long have you guys been here? Almost two years. Two years? In and, this home, yes. And where were you from originally? North Washington. North Washington? Bellingham. Oh, okay. Never heard of it referred to as um, North Washington. Yeah. Well, not Seattle. We're yeah, gotcha. Not Seattle, yeah. It's a good distinct uh, distinction. Yeah. Um, so what made you guys move over here? Uh, a That's different political climate, some really. To politics and yeah. some stuff we're dealing with in 2020. Yeah. The yeah. pandemic. and. Yeah. yeah, has brought a lot of people here for we sure. We have young kids, so yeah. we wanted a slower pace. Yeah, that makes sense. Be a little more purposeful. Yeah, so where are, you, where are you guys planning on moving to? Oh, we have another piece of property just uh, uh, toward Plummer, 25 acres there. So we, either there or we made another offer in a smaller house. Oh, gotcha. We did the subdivision, so this is the last house in the subdivision. Oh, is that what Hannah was telling me about? Yeah. The, yeah. Okay, awesome. So why, I guess, what, why sell this house? This seems like the perfect place. I don't know. We, we just wanted, it wasn't a forever house. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. We designed it, we lived in it, we got our love out of it, I guess, and we're, we're ready to share it, so. Got it. Yeah. Awesome. It was actually this big, expensive home that made me want to come back down and do a video on St. Mary's. There was never any homes quite like this while I was growing up, and now that there are, I wanted to see if things were starting to change. I told you I would try and keep an open mind, and I definitely have. I'm going to share with you why I don't ever recommend someone move here, and then I'll share why I think that might change soon. St. Mary's is Idaho before Idaho started changing. It's like a time capsule from the 1970s, maybe even earlier. And what I mean by that is the people of St. Mary's chose to live in St. Mary's because they either rejected the progressive movements of growth and technology or because they couldn't afford to live anywhere else. That might not sound bad to some of you guys watching that are living in a city that is going through some real difficult times right now, but these two things have some sharp edges. The people of St. Mary's do not care how you feel. 
what you think or where you are from. They have lived pretty much the same way for decades and they figure if things were so much better from where you came from, why did you move here? They are tougher than nails and they will test your resolve to see if you have what it takes to be with them. I grew up with some of that in my life and at the time it was extremely difficult. I had a lot of struggles as a young kid and being treated that way left me feeling really bad. But I can say now that I get it. It's not easy living that remotely and in that small of a town. Some of the people don't have anything better to do so they're going to get in your business. They're going to say things about you and if your skin is so soft that it bothers you, you're going to cause a bunch of drama and these folks don't want any of it. I do see a change on the horizon for St. Mary's, but it's going to be a while before St. Mary's makes it on the cover of any relocation magazines. And honestly, now that I'm a little older, I hope it never changes. Because if it wasn't for people like them, I wouldn't have felt the need to solve my issues and become the thick-skinned individual I am today. We need people like the folks of St. Mary's in our world to remind us that comfort will make you weak, but embracing a little discomfort keeps you free. I actually had the opportunity to interview a local business owner that had left St. Mary's when she was young, got her college diploma in Missouri, and decided to move back for reasons I think many of you can relate with. Here's that interview. But yeah, if I could just ask you some questions. Sure. That's okay. How long have you lived in St. Mary's? Well, I grew up here. I moved away um, to go to college and then came back to raise my family. Oh, really? So you, where would you go to college? I started off at the University of Idaho and then I transferred to the University of Missouri. Really? And you chose to come back? Yep. Why did you choose to come back? Uh, to, to raise my children. Here. Okay. Yeah, I think if I wouldn't have wanted to have kids or anything, I probably would have traveled around and done more, mm -hmm. but I, it was really important to me for them to have the same upbringing that I did here and yeah. the same freedom that I did as a kid. Yeah. So tell me about that. What is it about St. Mary's that made you want to come back and raise kids? Well, mostly just to give them the opportunity to be kids and to be able to experience a little bit of freedom. <laughs> Sorry. It's okay. It's okay. No. Uh, I'm uncomfortable too. Yeah, I've, I've no, never been filmed filming. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, basically just to give them uh, the opportunity to to walk through the streets and to go into stores and to behave like little adults that we're trying to raise. Yeah. And so towns like that give them that. And the fact that I know pretty much everybody here, I always hear about how my kids are in public. So I have the feedback to know if they're doing well. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. Yeah. So I've been in North Idaho for 32 years. Mm -hmm. And I remember back in the day, like 90s, early 2000s, mm -hmm. coming to St. Mary's and people were a little rough. They uh -huh. didn't, they, I remember being called city boy, which was very strange. I'm like, yeah, Coeur d'Alene's not really a city, you know? Yeah. <laughs> um, and there was, you know, there was kind of this, you, you had to be tough skinned. Yes, yes. And sure. is it still like that? I think so. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a logging community. So we was kind of just bred into our very fabric of who we are. Yeah. Uh, we're tough and we're hardworking, and I think that's exactly how I want to raise my kids. Yeah. How do you feel about the growth, about people moving here from well, out of town? I'm, I'm excited about it, especially because I've got a business here on Main Avenue. I welcome it. I hope for it. Yeah. Um, and I think it's kind of cool. I mean, it challenges us as, as a community, but it would get new perspectives, new uh, backgrounds, all sorts of the things that you need in the world. Yeah. Do you feel like the mindset has changed a little bit with locals or are they still nope. very much like, get the hell out of here? <laughs> you do hear, I think it's probably 50-50. I think the get the hell out of here's are just loud. Yeah. You know, I think that that tends to be the case with anything really, but. I mean, 50-50 is a, a little bit bigger of a number because yeah. <laughs> we yeah. still have that in Coeur d'Alene, yes. but it's a pretty, it's it's a shrinking number. Yeah, I think it's, it's concerning though, just for infrastructure and stuff like that in a small town. Yeah. I think that that is, it's, I think that's a valid concern, but it's something that we could probably do something about. Yeah. Do you, what do you hope for your kids? Do you hope that they do what you did, go, go to college and then mm -hmm. come back? If they want to, yeah. yeah. Um, but I do hope that they go out and experience whatever pulls them to be experienced, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I would love for them to get out and explore. And if they want to come back, for sure. But if not, that's great, too. Yeah. Because for me, it could have gone both ways. What's your favorite thing about St. Mary's? Mm. I think just the, the freedom that, that you get from being here, being able, 
I know this is probably going to make me sound kind of like a hick small town person, but it would be kind of scary to live in a city right now. Just with the environment, uh, the atmosphere in our country in general, mm -hmm. but also, I mean, I don't get, I don't get nervous being in a city or, you know, Spokane doesn't make me nervous, but I think being in something larger, that would worry me. Yeah. Um, you know, so being here, you've got security and comfort and I appreciate that about St. Mary's. Yeah. And it's a pretty generous community. What's the worst thing about St. Mary's? I think just kind of the stereotypical small town stuff. You know, everybody knows everybody's stuff. Yeah. And people are not shy about sharing what they know or even what they have made up. There's a lot of that. So sometimes being close knit has its own problems. Yeah. What would you say, who would be the person that would fit well and make it from out of town move into St. Mary's? What would their personality be like? Like, how would you describe that person? Yeah, I think hardworking. Um, I think being conservative probably helps, you know, mm -hmm. politically, and, and but but it's not necessary. Uh, just do it. I would say tough-skinned, for sure. Yeah. Friendly. Just like the type of person that you want to be around. Like a nice <laughs> asshole. <laughs> like <Yes>. that. <laughs> yeah, that's a good way to put it. Yeah. I mean, that's at the end of the day, like it took me a long time. I was a very sensitive kid growing mm -hmm. up. And so when I came across people that were rough skinned and wanted to poke at me, I was like, oh, what are you doing? Yeah. But now that I'm older, I realize, well, actually, those are the best people. Yeah. Because right. they're testing you. They're mm -hmm. seeing, are you somebody that I want to interact with or yeah. associate yes, with? Yes, that's a great way to put it. Yeah, because now what we're seeing is this overreaction. I don't want to offend anybody. Mm -hmm. And everybody's thoughts are valid. And yeah, <laughs> like, for sure. Logic doesn't have to matter. And that's what we're seeing right now is that that doesn't work. Yeah. And What's the name of your business here? It's The Paper House. The Paper House. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. I'm going to promote you. Yeah, thank so. you. That's awesome. Awesome. Thank you very yeah. much, Devin. I really thank appreciate you. it. And Honestly, I don't think I could have said it any better. The people that will fit in well in St. Mary's are hardworking, thick-skinned, community-oriented individuals. So with that said, I'm not going to recommend people avoid St. Mary's anymore. But I will ask a lot of questions and make sure they're a person that can handle some of the prickly people that live down there. I really enjoyed making this video and I really appreciate you sticking with me all the way through. I'm going to be doing more videos like this soon, so make sure you subscribe if you want to go on more adventures with me. And if you are serious about getting moved to Idaho, feel free to reach out at the phone number or email address listed below. Day, nights, weekends, it does not matter. My team and I are here to make sure everyone who's looking at moving to Idaho is going to be a good fit and that we find the best place for you. Thank you for sticking with me. I know this was kind of a long video, but I really am glad you guys are supporting the channel and I will see you on the next one.